Well, hallelujah, we're here at Burwood to, uh, again to preach the gospel. That's why we come out, so that people can understand that God loves them, that he cares about them, he values every person. If you have breath in your lungs today in Burwood, if you have a heartbeat, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, he wants you safe in his hand, he's calling his children, his people to come to him, he's drawing them by his spirit and he will do the saving today. He's a God of all salvation, of all goodness, he is good, he is holy and he is worthy. He's worthy of our praise, he's worthy of our worship. So God so loved the world, that's what the Bible says, he so loved the world that he gave. What a wonderful thing. He gave his only begotten son. Think about it carefully. He gave his son, Jesus came to this earth. He took on humanity. He was willing to be crucified amazing did we do anything to deserve it did we do anything was God obligated to us in any way no it was purely sacrificial love and sacrificial love is so different to this world's love if there was more sacrificial love in the world if it was practiced there wouldn't be wars there wouldn't be crime there wouldn't be people hating each other and damaging children for life and all the terrible things that happen. If the love of God was in more in people's hearts and in their lives and in their actions, things would be different. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's everybody, whosoever would believe on him would not perish. It's God's desire that none should perish but all should have everlasting life. Jesus said, I go to be at my father. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Where I go, you'll be with me. I go to make a place for you. What a beautiful thing. Sacrificial love. The Bible talks about love a lot because it's so important and it's not the Netflix love and the, the honeymoon love and the love that people bandy around, love is love and all the rest of it. It's not that love. It's the true love of God. Greater love than this, there isn't. There isn't greater love than one lay down their life for another. That's what Jesus did. He laid down his life. God the Father laid the iniquity of us all upon him. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. We have trouble imagining it. We have trouble embracing it. We have trouble following that example. And that's the problem. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll, you'll do my commands. You'll follow my commandments. A lot of people misinterpret that. They try their hardest in their self-life, in their flesh, to act out the love of God. They go and help the poor. They do all these things, and it's, it's works-based salvation, and that's sad. There's nothing we can do to work our way to heaven. It's not about that. It's not the true love of God. That's just us trying to love like Jesus loved. It's only when we are truly born of his spirit. And this is his promise. He causes us to be born again. He causes us, our spirit to be activated. That we can be truly changed on the inside. That we can truly then begin to act in the love of God. The Bible does speak about love a lot. Jesus said, even love your enemies. How can we do that? How can we love our enemies? It's not in our human nature to do so. Our human nature wants vengeance. Our human nature wants that hurt taken away, that somebody's hurt us, somebody is our enemy, wants to see them, bad things happen to them. 
So that's not the love that God is talking about. The love that he gives us. It's a gift of God. And Jesus showed us that love. He demonstrated that love. God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not while we have worked our way to heaven, while we've worked up brownie points and we've helped the poor and we've done all these things. And please don't think that I'm saying we shouldn't do those things. We should do all those things. Jesus said, do them. He said, when you help the least of them, you're helping me. And so we're commanded to do that. But it's not in order that we can be saved. We do it as a result of being saved. It's an outpouring of what God has done on the inside of us. Now the Bible also talks a lot about love in Galatians. It outlines the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, kindness, patience, and self-control. But Paul says the greatest of these is love. Without love, the rest of it is just like a clanging symbol. Think about it, people. Those works we do in the flesh, all those, the pretense of being patient, the pretense of having self-control, the pretense of being kind and gentle and good, is can be just a work of the flesh, or it can be out of the love of God that he has placed 